when does that momentum of wealth start, you know, doing the hockey stick? And I think you answered it. It's when you reach mastery or is there another answer when it's like, once you have a certain net worth and your money's is compounding, it's working for you that you also are able to see it. The answer is yes to both of those, because there, there is this point where money really starts to work for you. And usually it's about the six to $8 million mark. Once you kind of get to that point, then, then your money's out there in a bunch of different places and it's working for you. So you've, you've got this money that just continually comes in and it's mastery. You know, it, it, it is, um, being so good in that field where you can have a conversation. And, and the reality is, is this is it's the same conversation when you're buying something for $200,000 as you are for 2 million. It's just that your skills and perspective are so much bigger and broader and you have so much more to pull from that you don't make the mistakes in the big deals anymore that you would have, could have, and did in the little ones. And then you, you're rewarded for that. Let's actually stay there because that's something that I've had to recently kind of realize smaller deals and bigger deals is just a couple of zeros, right? And so if someone has that mindset, like, oh my gosh, I can never think of something like over a million dollars to like, you know, invest in or do this deal or raise capital for, what would you say to that person who's kind of stuck playing, playing small? Real talk, you probably haven't earned the right to play big yet. You know, there's, there's a difference between one of my good friends, Daniel uh, Del Real says, he says, um, there's a difference between learned knowledge and revealed knowledge. Learned knowledge is what you read in a book or you go take a course or you revealed knowledge is when you get punched in the mouth and you have to figure out how to fix it. So it is having revealed knowledge is what gives you the ability to, to take on those big ones because the mistakes cost so much more. The little ones are where you get the, the, you take that learned knowledge and you turn it into revealed knowledge. So I think that, that it is, sometimes it's fear, but most of the time, if you surround yourself with people who are on the same journey as you or farther along with than you, they will tell you when it's fear. Um, you know, when uh, Daniel, we were, we were at a, down in Mexico at our house and hanging out one night. And he told me, he goes, Aaron, why is it every time we get into a room where it's like super successful people, you always say, look, I, I get emotional sometimes even thinking about saying this. He goes, you always say, I don't deserve to be here or these are big fish and, and I'm just a little fish in a big pond. And he goes, you deserve to be here. You've earned the right to be in these rooms. And it was it's those kinds of conversations from people who care about you that say you've, you've already earned the right. So you have the ability to step out of fear. Um, and then, and then you can start taking, taking some of those bigger swings that still feel like small swings. Cause it's just swinging the same bat. Mm. I think that's the most powerful thing for me personally about getting into masterminds, getting around those circles of people that are way more successful financially than you. And you're looking around and you're like, we're shoulder to shoulder, we're rubbing elbows, we're in close proximity, and you realize they're no different than you. They maybe just been in the game longer. They maybe just, you know, invested in a couple of different things or didn't pivot like my problem was last year, hopping all around. They just went deep into one thing. And I think that's just the beauty of and the power of masterminds. Would you say that's one of the things yeah, and for I me it's the belief? I would challenge you a little bit in that um it's not just financial, you know, it's not just being farther along financial for it. And I'll, I'll back up just a little bit. I think there's a big difference between being wealthy and being rich. You know, I think wealth is a state of being that has a financial um, part of it, whereas rich is just a state of account. So when you put yourselves in rooms where people who are farther along the, the wealth journey than you are, not just financially, but in the whole, the whole thing, then you're able to get pulled in their, pulled in their, their wake. I, I've been in some masterminds where it was all about money. And, you know, honestly, some of the guys were total a-holes and, and that was the only thing that was important to them. And for, for me, and I think for you, and since you're hanging out with, with Diego and Brian and, and know so much about GoBundance, it's really finding those places where money gives you a commonality because money doesn't come by accident. So when you start to build wealth and you, you get yourself into these rooms where 
these people have built a certain level of wealth and along with that have also grown to be better people, now you can start leading a whole life of success and not just financially, not just being rich financially.